While you're in the first five seconds of the video, go ahead, like and subscribe. Mind if I say something real quick? Go ahead. Let me give Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 30. All right. Because the truth is, in some cases, you have brothers and sisters that they think they've been here for a certain amount of time. They've been here for a year. They've been here for two years or three years. And they've consistently kept the Sabbath. And then eventually they get tired of it. It becomes weary. And they're like, you know what? I've, I've kept the Sabbath for such a many time, amount of times. You know, Lord won't trip if I miss this one or next week or this week. People understand my woes. They understand that gas prices is high. They understand that COVID is around now. Those are all excuses. Watch this. Read that. Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 30. Come on. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths. Which we've been listening to, hearing that all day. The Lord said, ye shall keep my Sabbaths. Now, the Sabbaths here ain't just talking about the seven-day Sabbath. But that's what we're talking about today. So it says, ye shall keep my Sabbaths. Read on. And reverence my sanctuary. And do what? And reverence my sanctuary. The truth of the matter is that some people do not respect the Lord's sanctuary. They think it's something light because they've done it for an X amount of time. And consistently that, uh, it's all right. I've done that. Lord know my heart. Lord know what I've been through. He know what I'm going through. But that's not so. The Lord says, ye shall reverence my sanctuary. All right? We are supposed to desire to be here and keeping the Sabbath with the nation of Israel, with your believing brothers and sisters. Let me get uh, Numbers chapter 9 really quick. And start at verse um, 6. We're going to jump around. Numbers chapter 9 and verse 6. Come on. And there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man. Now, this right here is going into the Passover, right? The Passover is a Sabbath. The Lord said, you shall keep my Sabbaths. Now, we ain't going into Passover. We're going over the seven-day Sabbath. But it is a Sabbath. So the same wisdom that we're about to uh, read here. Is the same wisdom that should be applied towards God's seven-day Sabbath. So read it again. Numbers chapter 9 and verse 6. And there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man. Well, there were certain men that were defiled by COVID. They got sick, right? Let's just imagine and say that. Read on. That they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. Uh -huh. And those men said unto him, we are defiled by the dead body of a man. Wherefore are we kept back, that we may not offer an offering of the Lord in his appointed season among the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. So it was understandable that they had to actually stand back. They was defiled by a dead body. Some cases, some people have understandable reasons. Listen, I can't come. I'm sick. I can't make it. But watch this. Jump to verse uh, 13. Numbers 9, verse 13. But the man that is clean. But there are some people that are not sick. And as soon as they get the snuffles in the morning because they had the AC on all day all night. Right. Now they say, <coughs> I got a quarantine. I'm sick. But really, you clean. You're not sick at all. Come on. But the man that is clean. Or maybe you're too tired. You Maybe you had a long work week. And you said, man, my, my body hurt. In your mind, you convince yourself your body hurt. You know what I'm saying? You think, I'm too tired. My, my back hurt. My legs hurt. I've been on my feet all day. Man, I need a little bit more rest. Man, I can't make it. You know what? Let me put on Telegram that I can't make it to the Sabbath tomorrow for personal reasons. We hear that a lot. For personal reasons. Come on. But the man that is clean and is not in a journey and forbear to keep the Passover, even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people. Because the truth is, some people be like, man, I don't feel like making that 45-minute drive. I don't feel like driving an hour, an hour and a half to get to the Sabbath. And, and trust me, that's not a long time. Now, we understand you got to drive two and a half, three, three and a half, four hours drive. Okay, cool, especially if you're more elderly. That's understandable. But we got people that drive over an hour, an hour and a half, sometimes two hours to come and make the Sabbath consistently. The Lord said, read that again. Bear, and forbeareth not to keep the Passover. From the top, verse 13. But the man that is clean and is not in a journey 
A lot and, of you are not in a journey too far to keep the to keep the Sabbath. Read on. And forbeareth to keep the Passover. Come on. And you make an excuse to keep the, the pass or, or keep the Sabbath. Read on. Even the same soul shall be cut off from among his people. Come on. Because he brought not the offering of the Lord in his appointed season. Or, that man shall bear his sin. Or you did not keep the Lord's Sabbath or reverence his sanctuary. So I pray y'all understand the same spirits that was going on back then is the same spirits that's here today. And if the shoe fits, wear it. Examine yourselves. Do not fall into the same spirits that our forefathers fell into when it came to delaying and keeping the Lord's Sabbath. Hey, go to uh, Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 12. Because you said something. You said a lot of people be, been keeping the Sabbath for a year, two years, and they get to a point where they be like, Ah, you know what? I kept I kept the Sabbath for I kept the Sabbath for a year. I'm good. Read that. Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 12. Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, read. The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. Read that again. The righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. So the right just because you kept the Sabbath. For years, two, three, four, five years, and then you stop keeping it, that's not going, that's not, that's not going, you can't say, but I kept it for two years. Right. No, <laughs> no. The minute you stop keeping the Sabbath is the day that you fell off. You backslid. You, you turned your back on the Most High God, and he turned his right back, right back on you. Read. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turneth from his wickedness. Just like the wicked. When they turn from their wickedness, they're not going to fall because they repented. They turned away from their wickedness. Read. Neither shall the righteous be able to live for his righteousness in the day that he sinneth. You're not going to be able to live by, for your righteousness that you committed, that you did in the past on the day that you sinned. And that's not that. that and then when they say in the day that he sinned, that's not uh, you stumbling and getting back up. No, that's talking about you sin. You actually stopped doing it and you kept not doing it. You just continue and not keeping the Sabbath because we're dealing with the Sabbath right now. You just continued in it. You continued, ah, I ain't going to make the Sabbath. I ain't gonna, week after week after week because in your mind, ah, I'm going to watch online. Even though you it's, you could be 20 minutes away from the school and your mind, ah, I ain't, I ain't going to go. You know what? Last week I got some good sleep. So this week I'm going to do the same thing. I had a long, I, I worked 60, I worked 60, 70 hours a week. I'm going to chill. That felt good. It's another one. Oh, my Lord traveling, so I can't make it to the Sabbath. Sister, ain't it other sisters with cars? You can't make it there, so now your Lord gone, so you can't be there? Right. Come on now. Right, because that, that, that will pop another scripture in there. Ezekiel 16. But let's finish this. Read 13. Verse 13. When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. So all that, that year, that two years that you kept the Sabbath, and the day that you decide, you know what, the pandemic here, I, I think I, I able-bodied, but I think I'm at risk. You know what, I'm going to I'm 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 watch online. Read. But for his iniquity. That's you trusting to your own righteousness. Read. That he have committed, he shall die for it. It says, read that again. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Meaning you will die because you chose to break God's commandments willingly. Without, a, without valid reasoning, you willingly decided to break God's commandments. That's sin. And it says you're going to die for it. You're going to have to answer for that. Um, read 14. Verse 14. Again. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, if he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right. If the wicked restore the pledge, give again that he have robbed. That's it. That's it. Uh, go back to Ezekiel. Actually, go to Ezekiel 16. Ezekiel 16, what, what the officer said about um, the wife that decided to stay back. Because Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 20. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God, they shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall but deliver their own souls by their own righteousness. So 
each and every one of us, brother, sister, male, female, we have to keep the commandments. Husband, wife, we have to keep the commandments. Because because this is so old saying, like when we was when we was younger, I don't know if y'all remember y'all chip, y'all parents all ever told y'all this. Uh we used to follow around our follow our friends around. They used to do some dumb stuff. And they'd be like, if yo, if 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 Johnny went went and jumped off a bridge, you're gonna jump off a bridge with him. Right. If he went and jumped out the window, you're gonna jump out the window. That's the same thing. We gotta we all have to understand that we gotta give an account on that day for ourselves. Because of course, of course, a, a sister's supposed to submit to her Lord. But if your Lord traveling, you're supposed to still make arrangements to get to the to the Sabbath. It's not it's not an excuse to to say, ah, you know what? Ah, my Lord's traveling. I drive with him. I can't make it. No, that's that's not that's not that's not what you're supposed to do because that shows the level of your faith. That shows that you only relying, you only coming because your Lord coming. Your, what, what, what's gonna happen if your Lord dies? You gonna stop keeping commandments? Hey, it's crazy how you just said that. Uh, go to First Timothy chapter two and verse fifteen, because Paul said the same exact thing. Like, just like how you said, if your Lord dies, so what? You gonna not not a cot on work or something, or you ain't you have no means to come to the school and keep the Sabbath? Watch this. How is the women gonna be delivered from this captivity? First Timothy chapter two and verse fifteen. Come on. Notwithstanding, Come she on. shall be saved in childbearing. Meaning obedient to her husband. Come on. If they if can... if two letter word, but a big meaning, a stipulation. It says if read they continue in faith and what in faith and what in faith the works of your faith show is 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 made by your actions and one of them which are the first principles of God, is what? Keeping the Sabbath. Keeping the Sabbath. The scripture says, notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith. Come on. And charity and holiness with sobriety. Y'all see that? So, sisters, just because your husband is traveling, that's no excuse for you not to make it to the Sabbath. Okay, you got one car for the family. There's other sisters that you can reach out to to help and see, hey, listen, my Lord is traveling this weekend. Is there a way that we can make an arrangement and, you know, I can catch a ride with you to keep the Sabbath? So forth and so on. It's not hard. Nine times out of ten, you know, at least a week or two ahead of time before your husband is traveling. That's enough time to make arrangements. All right? Let's see. Go back to Ezekiel 20 and verse 17. Ezekiel 20 and verse 17. I pray that I pray that you that this this is this is hitting somebody, hitting home for somebody, because the things that go on in this world, the trials, the, the tribulations that's coming, is no excuse to not keep God's commandments. And that we talking about the Sabbath, but that goes for everything. The the the, the, the that's just like a, a, a that's just like a, a brother that deal with lust, just because it's a billboard. Man, they putting a the billboard in my face. I ain't got no choice but to look at it. No, don't look at it. In the summertime, man, they, these sisters they they wear half they were half naked. Don't look. That that's it's in your power to keep the commandments, because you had like we were just read like read in James when you stumble and fall into that sin, that's your lust. You falling into your lust, and it's only a matter of time before you fall into that lust and that, that spirit catches take you right up out the, out the truth. Uh, Ezekiel 20 and 17. Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 17. Nevertheless, mine eyes spared them from destroying them. Neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness. Uh -huh. But I said unto their children in the wilderness, Walk ye not in the statutes of your fathers, neither observe their judgments, nor defile yourselves with their idols. So we see, even though we, even though the most, even though we, we uh, profaned the Sabbath. We polluted the Sabbath. We see that the Most High showed us mercy. So we can't we can't be like the Christian church and take that mercy for granted and think, oh, I'm under grace. Because it's only a certain amount of time. And, and two, the scriptures say that the Most High said he's going to have mercy on whom he will have mercy. And he's going to, um, what did it say? I'm going to have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I can't remember the rest of it. But you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So we got to understand that 
you don't know that 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 next time you decide to stay back, you don't know. Mozart might take you in your sleep. You don't know because you decided to sleep in. Like ah, I'm gonna get some more rest. You might not wake up. We don't know that. We don't know if the Most High gonna be merciful to us. We see, we see, we know that the Most High is very merciful, but we don't know if we don't know if we at the we had, we got one more try, and he snuff us out. So we got to be very mindful of the commandments. Read verse nineteen. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. And uh, read. And hallow my Sabbath. He says, hallow my Sabbath. Honor my Sabbath. The um, officer brought out earlier. Reverence the Sabbath. We have to, we have to do these things. The Sabbath day is a, is a, is a holy day. We got to esteem it very highly. Read. And they shall be a sign between me and you that she may know that I am the Lord your God. That's that sign again. Us keeping the Sabbath is a memorial. It's a sign. It's a token of us that we are the children of Israel. And if you're sitting back at home because you want to get some sleep, you want to get some rest, it's only a matter of time before you back out. you getting your rest and you waking up and now you're going shopping because all the deals start, all the deals and all of that is going on on Saturday. It's only a matter of time. So you got to be mindful of, of that spirit, not entertaining it. Read. Verse 21. Notwithstanding, the children rebelled against me. They walked not in my statutes, neither kept my judgments to do them, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. They polluted so, my Sabbaths. So here we read time and time again, the Most High, us going and breaking the commandments, the Most High showing us a little mercy. And we, 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 we see it. We in captivity. But we have to break that cycle. It's up to us to break that cycle. We got we to gotta break that cycle and return to the Most High God wholeheartedly and uphold his Sabbath, uphold his laws. Uh, jump up to verse... <laughs> Uh, that's it on that. That's it on that. Uh, pull up that that book, the National Sunday Law. Pull up the National Sunday Law. Because well, one thing that we we were given the Sabbath, the, the Most High gave us the Sabbath as a sign, and we were destroyed. We, we we broke God's commandments. We went into captivity. We were destroyed. Our nationality was stripped from us. And then in the process of that time of us, our nationality being stripped from us, our heritage, God's laws being stripped from us, things were changed. Because many of us came out of Christianity. We came out of these different customs and, and, and idolatrous ways. And this is uh, Judas chapter 5 and verse 20 before we pull that book up. Because the nations, we read in Judas chapter 5 verse 20, but the scriptures talk about crafty counsel. And when you go in Psalms, it was it was a, a it was things. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It was thing. There were things planned to keep us away from our God. And we know, of course, that can't happen. The Most High hand and everything. But we, we were, it, there were things planned and plotted to keep us away from God's laws, to keep us away from the true understanding of the Bible. We learned it. Now we've learned it, and now we want to go back into our old ways. We want to go back into not keeping the Sabbath holy. We want to go back to profaning God's holy Sabbath. That's not the spirit we're supposed to roll in. We're supposed to uphold his Sabbath with all our heart, with all our mind. Pull up that. We'll read that real quick. Judith chapter 5 and verse 20. Now therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any error in this people, uh -huh. and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin. So the nations know that when we break in God's commandments, that's our ruin. We're nothing. We can't do nothing. We don't have no power. They know that when we keep in the commandments of God, they know that the Most High God is going to fight for us. The Most High God is going to make sure we're good. But when we not, he, he going to, hey, have your way with us. Scriptures talk about the, the, the nations is the Most High's belt. 
We got to understand it. And the nations know that. The nations know they roll. When we going off, the Most High going to send them against us and destroy us. And that's why we in destroyed in the cave state now. Read that. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. And uh -huh. let us go up and we shall overcome them. Uh-huh. But if there be no iniquity in their nation. But if there be no iniquity in the nation of Israel and the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, read. Let my Lord now pass by, lest their Lord defend them and their God be for them. And we become a reproach before all the world. So the nations know that when we're keeping God's commandments, they can't touch us. So we got to understand that. When we're keeping the Sabbath, it's a sign. That's the reason why the Most High said that the Sabbath is a sign. Between us and him. We keep the Sabbath. He there for us. He got us. It's like a father with his son. So we decide to go off and go do our own thing. I, right. Hey, like, like I remember my mother used to always tell me, you go to jail, I ain't picking you up. I'm going to leave you in there. And I was petrified to go to jail. Because I was like, I ain't finna stay. I don't want to stay in there. I was terrified. And I did, I, I did whatever it took to not go to jail. But everybody don't have that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody don't get that story. But that's the same way the most high. Hey, you, 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 you decide to, like in Deuteronomy 30, it say, I choose, it say, I give you life and death. Choose life that you may live. But if you, if you choose death, hey, that's your, you want to choose, hey, you're going to get the curses. You're going to get punished. You're going to get, you're going to get the slums. I created you to be on top, but if you decide to do against my commandment, you're going to be on the bottom. And he said, I'm going to leave you there. I ain't, hey, I ain't got nothing. I'm, you just, you chose to go that route. Hey, I'm going to let you be. But pull up that, uh, that book, National Sunday Law. And we're going to go to, go to the next one. This is National Sunday Law, page 33. Let's bring that closer. The change of the fourth commandment was attempted gradually over a period of time so as not to arouse anyone. So that's that's a crafty counsel. That's a, a uh, popular persuasion. And this is this is this is off the this is off the off a topic. This is that's the, just that that statement alone. Now, of course, we're going into the Sabbath day dealing with this. But just that statement on it says, the change of the fourth command was attempted gradually over a period of time so as not to arouse anyone. That's the same thing they did with the um, LGBT. Because I remember when we was watching Bugs Bunny and, and Looney Tunes and all of that, they had Bugs Bunny dressing up as a, as a woman with lipstick on, kissing Elmer Fudd and all of that. Those were those... Uh, Subliminal, sublim, subliminal messages put out there, and it was you. Ah, oh, it's, oh, that's funny. And then over over the course of time, little by little, now it's just exposed and out there. Ain't nothing. It's just out there. But then they would they would insert those little. They was inserting those small messages a little bit over the time to desensitize everybody to it. So now you bring it up. Oh, something wrong with you. Why you why you hating on them? If it, if if they as long as they don't bother me, no, it's wrong. But because it gradually because they they introduced it gradually over a period of time, it's they made it normal. They normalized it, but it's not normal. But back to the Sabbath. Go back to that. But the change is a masterpiece of Satan's work. Get ready for a shock. The following mind-boggling statements were made by church authorities and are documented. And mind you, this is Esau. This is a book by Esau about the National Sunday Law. Read. Question. Have you any other way of proving that the church, Roman Catholic, has power to institute festivals of precept? Answer. Has she not such power, she could not have done that in which all modern religionists agree with her. She could not have substituted the observance of Sunday, the first day of the week, for the observance of Saturday, the seventh day, a change for which 
There is no scriptural authority. Wait a minute. It says a change for which there is no scriptural authority. Meaning that there's no scripture in the Bible that says we're supposed to keep Sunday and not the Sabbath. But 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 Christi Christianity, the Christian churches all across the nation come together on Sunday. Then when you ask them about it, they pull scriptures that ain't got nothing to do with um they pull scriptures that has nothing to do with uh, the Sabbath day or not keeping the Sabbath day. They pull scriptures and say, well, the Pharisees, well, the Israelites accused Jesus of not keeping the Sabbath. Uh, accusation don't mean that that's a change of the law. That's an accusation. And hey, you know what's heavy about that? You know what's heavy about that? The, when we went to the when we went to the Christian church, we asked the pastor, "Why do you do that? Why do you celebrate yep. on Sunday?" He said, "Cause we can, cause we yep. want to." But yep. here in the book it says the man asked the question, and the answer was because the Catholic Church had the power to do it. That's really why you do it. Right. You just didn't know that, so you said, yep. "Cause I want to do it." Yep. But the truth is, the Catholic Church pushed that, and they had the power to do it, and they taught you to keep it on Sunday. Yep. That's the truth. So back to the book. Just read the highlighted part. Again, the question. Answer. Oh, I'm sorry, you won't. Yeah, at the question. Bottom. Or the bottom. Yeah, it started at the bottom, the bottom highlighted part. Answer. Has she not such power? She could not have done that in which all modern religionalists agree no, with not her. That. We just read that the bottom part where it say again the question. Okay, I got you. Again, the question is asked to them. Question, which is the Sabbath day? Answer, Saturday is the Sabbath Wait day. Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me they know that the Sabbath day is Saturday? That's what they, Hey, which is the Sabbath day? Saturday is the Sabbath day. Read. Question, why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church and the Council of Laodicea, A.D. 364, transferred the slow limnity from Saturday to Sunday. So they didn't have a scripture. They didn't, they didn't have a Bible scripture to um, show that, hey, you know what? Christ said do it on Sunday and not Saturday. No, they didn't have a scripture. They just did it because that's what they wanted to do. That's what they wanted to do. So we came out of Christianity, came into the truth, started keeping the commandments, learned that the Sabbath day was on a Saturday, the seventh day of the week, starting Friday sundown. And then now we in the truth, the pandemic that came, and we done got comfortable because they had limitations and all of that. And now it's time to come back and keep the Sabbath holy. And you're like, ah, you know what? I'm going to continue watching online. I'm going to continue sitting in the comfort of my home because I'm going to chill back. Read that next page, page 34. Page 34. Do church authorities acknowledge that there is no command in the Bible for the sanctification of Sunday? They do. Look at this. Catholic Cathedral Gibbons, excuse me, Catholic Cardinal Gibbons, in Faith of Our Fathers, page 111, said, You may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday, a day which we never sanctify. So in, in the Christian churches around, they are, so they are observing Sunday as the Sabbath, and they ain't even keeping that right. They still buy, sell, cook. They do everything that the Bible say not to do, and they doing it on a day that's, that's not, there's no scriptures to prove it. And this is, the, we reading, this is the Esau book, letting you know that the, you following the philosophy of the men. So if you in this, if you call, say, your, say you in this truth, and you decide that you're going to go, you're going to stand, you're going to make up multi, a multitude of excuses of not keeping the commandments, you rolling in the same spirit of Christianity. You're doing what you want to do and not what the scriptures say to do. Um, read on. What does it say? Uh, amazing. Amazing. 
You see the Council of Trent, 1545 A.D. Church leaders ruled that tradition is of as great authority as the Bible. They say tradition. Tradition is of great authority as the Bible. Come on, man. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.